In certain applied math type subjects, there's a common approximation for sine of x for very small values of x. So this is well known. And that approximation is sine of x is approximately equal to x when x is approximately equal to zero. And here I wanna investigate where that type of approximation can go wrong and then maybe open up the question of why it goes wrong. I found this in a math stack exchange post, which I will link in the description. Okay, so first we wanna look at the following limit. Well, I've got two copies of that limit because we're gonna calculate it two ways. One, using this approximation, and the other, using like more formal limit arguments. Okay, so we've got this limit of one over sine x minus one over x. So using the approximation, this is quite quick. So we've got the limit as x goes to zero of one over x minus one over x, which equals zero. That's because one over x minus one over x is identically zero. Then when you start taking the limit, you just will get zero. Okay, so it seems like there was nothing wrong there because if we're limiting as x goes to zero, well, then x is approximately equal to zero for all important points of this limit. Okay, so now let's calculate this using a more formal method. So I'll first put these guys together using like a common denominator. That's going to give me this limit as x goes to zero of x minus sine of x over x times sine of x. Okay. And then from here, we notice that we have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. We can probably use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. So this is gonna give us the limit as x goes to zero of one minus cosine of x over sine of x plus x times cosine of x. Again, I just took the derivative of the numerator and the denominator, that's L'Hopital's rule. Notice that this is still of type zero over zero because we've got one minus one occurring in the numerator. Then we have zero plus zero occurring in the denominator. So maybe let's use L'Hopital's rule one more time. So that's gonna give us this limit as X approaches zero of the derivative of minus cosine is sine. So we have sine X in the numerator. Notice the derivative of one is zero, so that's gone. And then we have cosine of X plus cosine of x minus x times sine x. So that's the derivative of the denominator. Okay, well let's notice that as x goes to zero, the numerator goes to zero, the denominator goes to two because cosine of zero is one. So we've got zero over two, that's no longer an indeterminate form, which means we've got a limit of zero. Okay, good. Notice these limits match, so this small angle approximation seems to work in order to calculate that limit. Okay, let's see a related limit, and that is one over sine squared of x minus one over x squared. So if we apply the small angle approximation, which is sine of x is approximately equal to x for very small values of x, then we can just replace this guy with one over x squared. So I've got one over x squared minus one over x squared. That's clearly identically equal to zero. So when we take the limit, we get zero. So the big question here is, does this trick work in this case as well? In other words, can we do a more formal limit over here and also get a limit of zero? Well, Obviously, since there's a punchline to this video, the, the answer should probably be no, but let's just make sure that that's true. So again, I'm gonna find a common denominator and combine these fractions. So that gives me this limit as x goes to zero of x squared minus sine squared x over x squared times sine squared x. Okay, nice. And now there's a bit of a trick. We don't really want to use L'Hopital's rule, even though it would apply here because we have type zero over zero. But this denominator just becomes more and more complicated after taking the derivative. 
I think you will probably end at a point where you can find the solution, but it's a long journey and there's probably an easier way to do it. And the way that we want to do it is to rewrite this into the product of some limits that are easier to find. So let's first notice that this guy right here is a difference of squares. We can rewrite it as x minus sine x times x plus sine x. And so that'll actually be pretty helpful. Okay, so let's see. We'll have this limit as x goes to zero of x minus sine of x over x cubed. You might say, well, why x cubed? Well, let's see why we need that. And then that's going to be multiplied by the limit as x goes to zero of x plus sine of x over x. So let's maybe extend this because we don't really need the room for the other version. And then times this limit as x goes to zero of x squared over sine squared x. Okay, now let's talk about our motivation. So our motivation here is to use the following fact, and that is that the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is equal to one. And we're drawn to use that fact because what's inside of our limit looks like it's almost in that form already. And that naturally leads us to break this limit apart into these three pieces. So let's notice that this guy is an indeterminate form. We can use L'Hopital's rule. That's gonna give us this limit as x goes to zero of one minus cosine of x over three x squared. That's our first step of L'Hopital's rule. This limit is the sum of two limits which are nice. Notice that this is the limit as x goes to zero of x over x plus the limit as x goes to zero of sine of x over x. And then the last one is the square of a limit, which is nice. This is the limit as x goes to zero of x over sine of x squared. Where here we're using obviously the fact that all of these component limits exist. So when we combine them together into our goal object, that limit also exists. So now let's look at these limits that we know already. So this limit right here is most definitely equal to one because x over x is one. This limit right here is equal to one by our fact. And then this limit right here is also equal to one by the reciprocal version of our fact. So what do we have? We have one plus one times one. So right now we have a two. Well, let's bring that out. And then we're left with the limit of this thing that's left over. This is still an indeterminate form, so we can use L'Hopital's rule. So that's going to give us sine of x over 6 times x. But we can bring this 6 out and see that we have 1 third times the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. But again, that's the same limit that we've used over and over and over again. That is one multiplying by one third means our final answer is one third. So now my question to you is what went wrong up here? Because this is a more formal argument, although we did like bend some rules along the way, but it would be pretty easy to check that those rules are being appropriately bent. Whereas up here, we did a fairly sketchy approximation, but that being said, a fairly sketchy approximation that works almost all of the time. And as a bit of a hint why this technique didn't work, I urge you guys to try this technique again, but instead of using this approximation, use two terms from the Taylor expansion. So in other words, use x minus x cubed over three factorial, and then you'll get some sort of idea for what went wrong over here. And that's a good place to stop.